see, the Earth has several movements it makes. Two of them you already know about. First, the Earth revolves around what? It revolves around the Sun. If you were looking down on Earth, down on the Earth's North Pole, from way out in space, the Earth would be moving counterclockwise around the Sun. It takes a little over 365 days for the Earth to get around the Sun one time. Okay, the second motion of the Earth is that the Earth rotates on what? You remember? It rotates on its axis. It takes about 24 hours to spin around one time. Again, if you were looking down on the Earth, down on the North Pole of the Earth from out in space, it would look like the Earth is spinning which direction? Counterclockwise on its axis. Or if you were looking at the Earth straight on, it would be looking like the Earth is spinning in an eastward direction. So standing on the Earth, it looks like the sky above is moving over our heads in a westward direction. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets rise in the east and set in the west. Okay, so those are the two main motions of the Earth that you're already familiar with. But the Earth also has a third motion that's very important for understanding the history of astronomy. As I've mentioned in previous lessons, the Earth is tilted about 23 and a half degrees. Right now, the north pole of the Earth points out into space close to the star Polaris. But it won't always be that way. That's because the Earth's axis is also doing something called precession. Precession. Think of a spinning top. As it spins, the axis of the top will wobble in a small circle. Well, the Earth does the same kind of thing. As it spins around, its axis slowly wobbles. Now, it's beyond the, an introductory course like this to explain exactly how this happens. Basically, it's caused by the gravitational pull from both the sun and the moon on the Earth over time. What this means is right now, the pole of the Earth points to a certain part of the celestial sphere. But as the axis processes, it slowly moves the direction in which it points in the celestial sphere. Now, how fast does this rotation take? Well, to make one full processing motion, one full circle takes about 26,000 years. Now that's a very long time. From a practical everyday perspective, you will not notice any change in the sky in your lifetime unless you become a professional astronomer and you start using some very fancy equipment to make precise measurements in the sky. The North Star Polaris will be the North Star for the rest of your life and the rest of your children's lives and the rest of your grandchildren's lives. If this course is still available online 100 years from now, the information will still be relevant because nothing major will have changed in the sky in that time period. Still, this slow movement does change things over time. It changes the way the stars appear in the sky in different seasons. You see, because the tilt of the Earth stays about the same through the whole cycle of precession, the ecliptic stays about the same as well. But as the Earth's axis slowly processes, the direction the Earth's axis points out in space changes. Because the Earth's tilt is processing, the background stars behind the sun shift over time. Picture the Earth right here during the summer solstice. We'll all call this position X. In 13,000 years, when the Earth is halfway through the precession movement, the axis will be pointed the other way. So now position X is no longer the position of the Earth for the summer solstice, but the position for the winter solstice. So does this mean the seasons are going to change over time as well? In 13,000 years, will we have Christmas during summertime? Well, actually, no. Our modern calendars aren't based on where the Earth is floating in space around the sun. Our calendar is calculated to correct for small changes like precession. So in 13,000 years, the spring equinox will still be in late March. The summer solstice will still be in June, and so on and so on. What will have changed, however, are the background stars. Instead of Orion being a wintertime constellation, it will be a summer constellation. So while the changes are very slow, in a thousand years the celestial sphere will look different than it looks now and my great 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 grandchildren will have to throw out this celestial globe and buy a new one. 
By then, the axis will be touching a different spot on the celestial sphere, and the background stars will have shifted with respect to the seasons. Now this motion, of course, changes where the background stars appear in relation to the sun. 3,000 to 4,000 years before Christ, the sun was in the constellation Taurus during the vernal equinox. About 2,000 years before Christ, it was somewhere between Taurus and Aries. By 1,000 BC, it was in Aries. By the time of Christ, the sun was in the constellation Pisces during the vernal equinox. Because Pisces takes up a fair amount of the ecliptic line, the sun is still in the constellation Pisces during the spring equinox, and will be so for an, about another 600 years. After that, it will be in the sign of Aquarius. Now, if your parents or grandparents remember the 1960s, they might remember the song from the rock musical Hair called Aquarius. The song was released as a single by the group called The Fifth Dimension, and it became an international hit song. The song was a celebration that the world was entering what was called the Age of Aquarius, which is actually a reference to this phenomenon of procession. Some astrologers believe the world goes through different ages, and that each lasts thousands of years, and these ages are marked by the position of the sun during the vernal equinox. This means, according to some astrologers, we're in the age of Pisces, and next is the age of Aquarius, because the sun right now is in Pisces during the vernal equinox. They even attach meanings to these ages, saying that the earth passes through these ages, human cultures go through radical shifts. Now, of course, all this is a lot of nonsense. Astrology, as we discussed before, is looking for meaning in the heavenly movements. Astrologers both in ancient times and today, believe the motions of the heavens actually predict what will happen here on the earth, or it will impact or cause things to happen here on the earth, or that it will determine or it will influence our personality. But this isn't true. For one thing, despite what the song says, the age of Aquarius hasn't even happened yet. The sun still is in the sign Pisces at the vernal equinox. Not to mention, the song is mostly mentioned with a lot of astrological gibberish lyrics. Regardless, if you ever hear the song or someone mentions it to you at all, now you know what the song is talking about. It's actually talking about the precession of the Earth's axis. As I said, axial precession is slow. It takes about 72 years for the celestial sphere overhead to move just one degree. Many of you as students are teenagers or preteens. By the time you are in your mid to late 80s, the sky will only have shifted one degree overhead. Let's see what this change will do to our celestial poles. Here in the north, we are used to seeing Polaris very close to our celestial pole, but it won't always be that way. Now this diagram here shows the path of the Earth's axial precession. Now around 7500 AD, we might be using the star called Alpha Cephei in the constellation Cepheus as our North Star. By 11,500 AD, the star Delta Cygni in the constellation Cygnus will be close to the celestial north. By 14,000 AD, the bright star Vega in the constellation Lyra will be our North Star. By 23,000 AD, the not-so-bright star Thuban in the constellation Draco will be the North Star, which was actually the North Star used by the Egyptians about 3,000 years before Christ, because 5,000 years ago, that was where our celestial north was. In fact, as far as positioning goes, Thuban makes a better North Star than Polaris, because in the year 2787 BC, it was almost exactly at celestial north, even closer than Polaris will get to it. Finally, around 28,000 AD, Polaris will be our pole star again. Now, keep in mind, for many thousands of years, there are stretches of time where there is no prominent star in the sky at the North Celestial Pole. Human beings will have to come up with more creative ways to find North in those times. Well, how about the South Celestial Pole? We looked at this last week. Today, if you want to find the South Celestial Pole, you can use the long bar of the Southern Cross, drawing a line from the cross through the bottom and then continuing that line down about three and a half cross lengths. And that point is somewhere close to Celestial South. It isn't perfect, but it might help you find your way if you're, say, lost in a swamp somewhere in Australia. Over time, Celestial South will change as axial precession happens as well. 
While the Southern Hemisphere doesn't have a pole star that's really noticeable right now, in the coming centuries it will. Of course, it will take a few thousand years, but it will eventually get there. Now, as the Earth's axis processes, you can picture it making another kind of circle on the celestial sphere in the sky. In 26,000 years, the circle will be complete. In the middle of this circle is what's called the ecliptic pole. Now, you know that word ecliptic because we've used that a lot in this course. The ecliptic is the path of the, on the celestial sphere taken by the sun over the course of a year. It's the path also that the moon and the planets stay really close to in the sky. The Earth is on what we call the ecliptic plane, which is the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun. If you extend that plane out into space and draw a line on the celestial sphere, that is the ecliptic line. All the constellations touching that line are called what? What are all the constellations touching the ecliptic called? The zodiac, right. So here's our ecliptic right here. Right here's our ecliptic. If you draw a line perpendicular to this ecliptic line, go straight up, you come to what's called the ecliptic pole. Think of the ecliptic pole as what the celestial pole would be if the Earth had no tilt. If it wasn't tilted like this, but it was straight up and down, that pole would be the ecliptic pole. The ecliptic north pole is dominated by the constellation Draco. Over the course of 26,000 years, the Earth's axis draws a circle around this constellation. So this means that throughout the ages, no matter what age human beings live in, Draco will always be a circumpolar constellation.